शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्त नम वेर स्टडिंग दि शंकर कॉमेंट्री ऑन दि फोर्थ सूत्र ऑफ भादरायण व्यास शारीरिक मीमांसा शास्त्र कॉमनली नोन एज ब्रह्म सूत्र एंड इन दैट the context is that work has to be done even for knowing brahman and the very instructions about knowing brahman though shastra we accept that shastra may be the source of knowing brahman but that will become source of knowing brahman only by some action of ours and and so brahman must be realized brahman has to be uh, you have to hear you have to think and all that instructions are there shankar started from the other end that what work can give us work can raise us so high as brahma work can lower us so down as animals or nara and in all that there is pleasure more or less and that is that pleasure as pleasure as we experience through our body and mind and anything which is ex- experienced through body and mind must undergo pleasure and pain and on the other hand bodilessness is the nature of brahman and that itself is called moksha and if you have bodilessness pleasure or pain does not touch you at all so it has no connection with work and then the question is and what work can give you other than this brahma to this what work can do work can produce something work can modify something work can get you something which you have not got and work can purify something and brahman which is the absolute reality is neither of them so there is no entry of work in the field of brahman then the question was asked ha huh? and then though it appears that do something is there but if you tell something about something where it is not applicable then it loses its meaning like a sharp razor if you hit on a stone nothing is going to happen that razor will come blunt so maybe there are instructions about some work but something which is not liable to change by work on that if you apply that they it will lose its meaning and so work has no meaning then the question was asked that why it appears at least some work is there and from that point we again pick up we had uh, a last time the read up to this tam atyantika purushartha vanchanam swabhavikat karyakarana sangata pravrutti gocharat vimukhi krutya pratyak atma sotastaya pravartayanti atma vayare drashta vaiti adi ni but to get the connection we go back a little and we go back to here kim arthani tarhi ah in between knowledge is mental activity though not physical and there shankar has clearly shown the difference between mental activity and pramana janya kya that with the means are there knowledge is not an action now the question is raised kim arthani tarhi atma vayare drashtavya shrutavya iti adini vidhi chhaya ani vachanati appearance of vidhi 
why these sentences are there. From here we pick up. Swabhavika pravrutti vishaya vimukhi karnarthani iti bruma. He said, we already told you that man's natural tendency is outside. In Kathopanishad it is said, paranchi khani vyatrunat swayambhu tasmat parang pasyati nantaratman kechi dhira pratyagatmana maikshat amrutta chakshu amrutatta michan. That the, our mental, physical constitution is such that the great Lord, self-willed Lord, has punched holes outside. And so, man goes outside. So, Shankari says, Swabhavika Prabhupada. Man's natural tendency is to go outside. And Brahman is the innermost reality in the form of innermost Atman. And so, the outgoing tendency has to be stopped. So, whether whatever sentences are there, that Brahman must be known, you must hear Brahman, all these are meant only to turn our face, Vimukhi Karnani, our tend natural tendency to go outside has to be stopped. For that sake, these instructions are there. Uh, beautiful we are getting from here. All the Vedantic sadhana, all the Vedantic sadhana is, first of all, Brahman being our real nature, why you require a sadhana? Because we are going outside. And that must be stopped. Unless we stop that, we cannot know our own real nature. My Guruji used to say, God is the abiding reality. Then we used to ask him, if God is the abiding reality, why don't we see him? And he used to reply this by repeating this question with a different tone. What a pity. Though God is the abiding reality, why we do not see him? And this is the answer. If God is our innermost reality, our tendency outside going, so how can we see God? Not that God is not there outside. God is inside of the outside. Inside outside is not only by my body, but there is an appearance and God is inner reality of that appearance. God is my inner reality, that is the nearest place where I can catch him. But throughout the world, God is the inner reality. And our tendency is to look from outside. That is what our senses can do. Yohi vairmukha pravartate purusha. And whatever man goes outside, why he goes outside? What is his thought? Ishtam me bhuyat, anishtam mabud iti that I should get always that is favorable to me. I should not get something unfavorable. Nacha tatra tentikam purushartham gabate. But there he does not meet with the ultimate fulfilling, ultimate fulfillment of life. He does not get outside, in the outside world, he does not get ultimate fulfillment of life. So, that who is desirous of getting the ultimate final goal of life, Swabhavika Karya Karana Sangata Pravrti Gocharat. But today's nature is such that this body Indriya's combination, they have a tendency to go outside and look at the world from outside. Vimukhi Krutya, what reply you had given in one sentence, that is explaining. <coughs> <coughs> 
stopping its tendency of to go outside pratyag atma srotastaya pravartayanti this was the most important word we discussed last time our natural tendency is to go outside but our reality is pulling us inside our reality is pulling us inside and there is a flow so if we stop the outgoing tendency automatically we will fall in the flow of going inside atma srotastaya pravartayanti pratyag atma innermost reality there is a current towards that innermost reality a flow towards that innermost reality which we do not feel because of the outgoing tendency that is the only consideration if the outgoing tendency is stop automatically will feel the innermost pull atma vayare drashtavya iti adi ni so atman has to be realized this doing anything anything in the world will not help you that is this sentence is taken from brother nikupnisha dhyanyavanke teaching his dearest wife maitri that all the love we see is due to the identity already existing and if you do not know that our love and attractions are going to defeat us and so atman should be realized that is the place of the center so bend all your energy into realizing atman the meaning is that stop going outside and know the atman and up to what point it reaches he said when you will realize atman you will not remain and maitri says that is dangerous he said no that is the only instruction which can be given that you will not remain you have to go beyond that i am brahman atma avinashi vare i am atma avichitti dharma atman is not going to be destroyed atman the very nature of atman is indestructible so don't be afraid but i consciousness has to go away till then you have to go inside till then you have to flow inside that is atma vayare drashtavya adini means how to say shrotavya mantavya nidhi jasitavya by hearing thinking meditating all this is meant for going inside and inside and inside in that flow up to that we had read tasya atma anveshanaya pravruttasya aheyam anupadeyam cha atma tattvam upadishyate no for a man pravruttasya tendency tasya atma anveshanaya one who is proceeding towards searching the atman ahe mupa anupadayam chatma tattvam upadishyate for him the nature of atman is being shown ne because the wrong idea was that nature of atman is told only as a part of the karma i have to do karma i am karta what is my real nature for that atma is being told shankar says no it is not like that the one who has started searching for the atman not one who is doing karma one who is started searching for the atman and that atman is not of the type that something in me i have to throw that atman is not like that i have to get something from outside atman is my real nature how can we throw it outside how can we obtain it from outside how can we throw my real nature so that is atman for him such atman is described that atman instruction is given to him which cannot be thrown 
which cannot be obtained from outside. Idam sarvam yatayam atma. That whatever is his atma nondi, how can you throw it? So, atman sarvavapi is described so that we cannot throw it. So that we cannot get something other than that. Let your search for at this connection. Eh? Atman Sagun Brahma or Sarvayapi Atma is described so that we know there is nothing other than Atman to be searched for. And then your search will be fully inside. Yatra tu asya sarvam atma eva abhu tat kena kampashyat. That is kena punishat, isha punishat. Also, brother, that final result, nature of atman. For whom, for him, for whom, or everything has become Atman. Then how can you create a difference of an instrument to see something else? Kena compassion. Nothing is outside my real nature. So what I have to see? And by what I can see? Because there is nothing other than Atman. So there is nothing, no instrument also by which I can see that. Kena kambijaniya, seeing, hearing, thinking, and realizing, experientially knowing, for that there is no separation between a subject and an object. There is nothing other than Atman. And so I cannot use any instrument for knowing him. What is the meaning? Stop using the instrument. He is the knower supreme. So how can you come out of him to know him? It is not an object. It is the reality. So by what instrument can you see him? Unless you come out, unless an instrument comes out, how can they see him? But you or your instrument are nothing but Atman. So, I am Atma Brahma, and this Atman, Manduka Upanishad, that also is in Brudharana, that this, this Guru tells you the gesture, putting his hand on his chest, disciple's chest. Putting disciple's hand on disciple's chest, he said, this Atman is Brahma. So, you have to go inside to get the uh, all-pervading Brahma. And that is Adi B. There are several such sentences which tell us that all this is Atman. If everything becomes Atman to you, you will not have to know something. The knower itself cannot be known as an object. So everything points out to you to go inside and inside and inside till you get your real nature. Then the wrong knowledge Maya had told him that if neither we have to remove something nor we have to get something from outside, then what is the use? We always think that we have something bad that has to be given up. And there are many things which we want, they should be obtained. But he says, this is our glory. We are getting back our real nature, which is all pervading. We are getting back our real nature, which is complete in itself. We are getting back our real nature, which is infinite. We are getting back our real nature, which is infinite, non-changing, non with no impurities, that joy. We are getting a permanent bliss which is our own real nature. So, yadapi akartavya pradhanam, mainly not doing something is its uh, characteristic, atma jnanam, the nature of self-knowledge, self-realization is 
not involving any thing to do. Hanai upada nai vana bhakti, neither anything to be given up, which is cannot be given up. These which we think to be given up are andriya. So is the question of giving up. I will tell a funny story in this respect. How Tyaga is most natural corollary of one who has understand the nature of Atman. Sri Ramakrishna's disciple, Swami Brahmananda, could teach many things through humor. One day, a Raja came, a king of some uh, state or uh, some land. He came and prostrated before Brahman Swamiji. Brahman Swamiji asked him, why such a uh, big prostration here? He said, Maharaj, to whom I should prostrate? You are the greatest of the Tyagis. Maharaj said, if that is the case, if you are uh, uh, prostrating before Tyag, I have to roll down before you. You are much bigger Tyagi than me. He said, how Maharaj? He said, what I have given up? That which does not exist. What I have given up? That which is unreal. And what you have given up? You have given up the real. So is your Tyaga not more? This was the way in which Brahman Swamiji showed how natural it is. Today's nature is different. That is wrong knowledge. But in reality, that is the only reality. Everything else is unreal. And holding on to unreal, you are given up the real. And I have given up only the unreal. So I am not as big Tyagi as you. So that is the naturalness of Tyaga. Nanak Dev or some Sikh Guru has a similar pada. Nama Japana Kama Choda Diya. Juta Na Choda, Krodha Na Choda, Satya Vachana Kama Choda Diya. Nanaka Ika Bhagavana Parose, Kalisa Ika Bhagavana Parose, Tanavana Kama Choda Diya. So, unreal things we are holding on to. Real thing you are given up. Kaudi Koto Kupa Samala, Lala Ruttana Kama Choda Diya. The trash we are collecting as money and the real jewel, our own real nature, that we are giving up. So, that is the Vedanta. Alankara Yayam Asmakam. He said, this is our glory that we are not seeking to give up something from us or to obtain something from outside. How? And we are not doing anything for that. Yet Brahma, no, one sentence. Iti, previous sentence, please. Hanaya upadana eva na bhavati iti, tat tatha eva iti abhipa gamnate. This is right, he said. That tatha eva iti abhipa gamnate. Our experience is that it is not for throwing up away or for getting our real nature. And so we accept that Alankara yayam asmakam, that is our glory. Yet Brahma Atma avagatav satyam. If once we know, we experience that Brahman is our reality. Sarva kartaveta hani. To do something itself goes away. Nothing remains to be done. Kurta kurtya tacha iti. Kurta kurtya means. Whatever had to be done has been done. That we are getting. This is our glory. The karmis can never come to this point. Karma being finite, they will have to go on doing karma. Even then it will not give the final emancipation. But our glory is that the very idea, the very consciousness to do something will go, will go away. Whatever had to be done, will be done by going inside. And he says, this has been told by the Vedanta, Tathacha Shruti, 
आत्मा चेत बीजा नियत अयम अस्मी पुषा किमच्छन तस् काम शरीर मनुसंजरे चेत इफ दिवेदांत सेट इफ इफ यू आर एक्सपीरियंशियली नोन दी आत्मन आई एम अस्मी थी दैट आई एम दैट इति पुरुषा ए साधक पुरुष इज नेवर यूज दैट पुरुष एंड स्त्री पुरुष इज ह्यूमन बी ए साधक ही मे इच्छन कस काम आयो शरीर मनुसंचरे टू थिंग्स आर देयर की मे इच्छन व्हाट डिजायर विल रिमेन इन हिम एंड what attachment for whom for whose desire he will follow the miseries of the body you understand this people have their own desires but due to attachment additional desires come for my wife's sake i have to do this for my husband's sake i have to do this for my children's sake i have to do this and for that i am suffering physically he said once you know yourself for whom you have to do something and what desire will remain in you these are two things mind you that is the universal human experience is still i don't want anything but for the family i have to struggle i don't want anything but for so and so have to do something नो शरीर अनुसंजरे दट ज्वर फीवर रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ ऑल बॉडीली प्रॉब्लम इवन बॉडी इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग माइंटल प्रॉब्लम वाय आई शुड गो इन टू दैट गीति एंड गीता ऑल्सो से बुद्धवा बुद्धिमान सृत कृत्या च भारत by knowing this you are really intelligent by knowing this you are really conscious of your own reality and you have finished doing whatever had to be done kurta kurtya cha bharata to arjun bhagwan is telling iti cha smruti gita tasmat na pratipatti vidhi sheshataya brahmana samarpanam so this very hypothesis that pratipatti vidhi sheshataya the sentences of vedanta are not part of action of knowing pratipatti vidhi you know you hear this is not vedanta is not asking you to do anything it is not a part of that so vedanta is the source of knowing brahman not as a part of the mandate for some action mandate for action of knowledge you are after this that replies oh now shankar goes back to the original problem which he had stated as an introduction to this sutra and that is the main conflict that vedas are meant for work vedas are meant to guide us in better work what about that yadapi kechitahu having firmly established that there is no place of subject object activity in the knowledge nor we have to get something nor we have to throw our real nature yadapi kechitahu pravrutti nivrutti vidhi tat shesha vetirekena kevala vastu adi veda bhaga nasti that there is no part of the veda either telling us to do something or telling us don't do this or some part of this doing or not doing apart from that telling only the nature of the thing such veda is not there that is what you are stoic said tat na upanishadasya purushasya 
ಅನನ್ಯ ಶೇಷತ್ವ ದಿ ಪುರುಷ ದಿ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ದ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿ ಟು ಬಿ ಡನ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡನ್ ಸೊ ಅನನ್ಯ ಶೇಷತ್ವ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಅದರ್ ದನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ ಅನ್ಯ ಸೌ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ತು ಏವ ಅಧಿಗತ ಪುರುಷ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಯೋನಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಅಲೋನ್ ಆರ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ ನಾವು ಹಿಯರ್ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಟೇಕನ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ದಾದು ಪಂಥಿ ನಿಶ್ಚಲ್ ದಾಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಂದಿ ಜೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವೇ ದ್ವೈ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಾಕೋ ವಾಣಿ ವೇದ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಅರು ಭಾಷಾ ಮೇ ಕರತ ಭರಮ ಕೋಚೇದ್ ಒಂದು ನೋಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಇ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆದರ್ಸ್ ವೆದರ್ ಇ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಡಿಲಿವಿಜನ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಟೇಕ್ ದಿ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಯಾಸು ಉಪನಿಷತ್ತು ಏವ ಅಧಿಗತ ಪುರುಷ ಅಸಂಸಾರಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ಮೈಗ್ರೇಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಪರ್ವಿಡಿಂಗ್ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಉತ್ಪಾದ್ಯಾದಿ ಚತುರ್ವಿಧ ದ್ರವ್ಯ ವಿಲಕ್ಷಣ ದಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಬೈ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ವ ಪ್ರಕರಣಸ್ಥ and it's a separate chapter jnana kanda is a separate chapter than karma kanda ananya shesha not part of any other chapter na so na asti iti na adi gamyate iti va shakyam bhavitum that you can't say that it does not exist that brahman which is told in the upanishads in a separate section you cannot say that it does not exist na adhigamete or you cannot say that it cannot be known important is how do you deny that it exists how do you say it cannot be known see a galaxy of people have known it iti va shakya madito it is not possible to say like that so esha naiti naiti atma everything else is removed atman will not go iti atma shabdat atmana cha pratyakhyatum ashakyatva neti neti iti atma brahman is neti neti of the nature of neti neti your own reality so the word your own reality is used and can you deny your own reality ashakyatva it is not possible for anybody to deny his own reality how a reference to buddhism now ye eva nirakarta tasse eva atmatva suppose i am denying everything but what is my self can i deny myself it is the reality of even the person who is denying so the zero or nihilism is meaningless one who says that the world is zero he, he is telling that so he is there now another argument nanu atma aham pratyay vishetvat upanishad sueva vigyayate iti ಅನುಪನ್ನ ನ ತತ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿತ್ವೇನ ಪ್ರತ್ಯುಕ್ತ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಐ ಔರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಓನ್ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಆತ್ಮನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವೈ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೆಸರಿ ವೈ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೆಸರಿ ಇಫ್ ಐ ನೋ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಸೆಟ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿನೈ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ
So this I told in the beginning. Now in the conclusion it is coming again. Why are Upanishads necessary? Why are any teaching necessary? He has said that the teachings are necessary for removing your swabhavic tendency outside and to make you fall in the flow inside. But he says, if that is finally my own real nature, then why any teaching is necessary? This is again a distortion of Vedanta. Some big philosophers think like that. Nanu Atma Aham Pratte Vishetva. It is an object of the consciousness I. Upanishads have Vigayati Tanapapanda. So it is illogical to say that when the Upanishads are teaching you that. Acharya is telling, no, this is a wrong thinking. That Sakshitvena Pratyuktatva. I have told you again and again that this I is not Brahman. But that which is the witness of this eye, this eye consists of so many waves. And that changing eye, but the reality of this changing eye knows, witnesses all the changes in this eye. That is the reality of eye. We have not said that you directly know Brahman by eye consciousness. We have said that when you say I, inside that there is Brahman. When you say I, there are as if two parts. One is changing I, and one is the eternal witness I. So he said, We have already replied to your question by telling that it is the witness, not this changing I. Nahi, aham pratye vishay kartru veti reke na. Normal aham pratye vishay is doer. I am the doer. Veti reke na, but other than that. That sakshi, the witness of that. Sakshi means knowing without changing. Knowing without changing himself. So, not this doer eye. Doer eye changing continuously. But that which knows this doer eye without changing, Sarva Bhutastha. And another important thing is, it is not this individual eye. This eye resides in everybody. Your reality is the reality of all. That is being told again and again. So, see the difference. And then understand that I consciousness is not the direct knowledge of Brahman. Within that I consciousness, Brahman is there. And what is the difference? It is not the doer. It is the witness, unchanging. And it is the, it resides in every being. Sama. And same to all. Eka. One. Reality, not to Kutastha Nitya, unchangingly eternal Purusha, that is the being. Vidhi Kande Tarka Samayava Kyanachet Adhigata Sarvasyatma. This is not known except Vedanta. This is not known in the Karma Kanda at all. The real nature, which is not the doer, which is present in all, this is not known in the karma kanda. Tarka samay, or all the philosophies based upon reason. In the karma kanda of the Vedas, or in all philosophies other than Vedanta, based on reason only, this Atman is unknown. This Atman which is in everybody, this Atman which is not the doer, this Atman which is the eternal witness, this Atman which is in everybody, this Atman which is the same in everybody, this Atman which is one without a second, this Atman which is unchangingly permanent, this Atman which is my being, this such an Atman is not known 
by anybody in Karmakanda or logical philosophies. Sarvasya Atma, that is the conclusion. Not only present in everybody, but the reality of everybody. Atasa na kenachit pratyakhatum shakya vidhi sheshatum vahanita. About this Atman, we are telling that you cannot negate it. This small I has to be negated. Small I, everybody should negate. So we have said that it is, cannot be negated. It is the reality of the man who is negating. We are talking about that reality. We are not talking about this small I. So that reality, which is of this nature, that nobody can negate. Or nobody can make it a part of work. This non-doer Atman, one without a second, Sarva Vyapi, can not be, can never be negated, can never be made a part of work. Atman Tazevacha Sarvesham, Nahe Anapupade. And because it is the reality of work, neither it is to be given up, nor to be obtained in the new need. Now, relation between this world and Atma. Sarvami vinashyat vikara jatam purushantam vinashyati. Take the example of pralaya or gyan pralaya. That is when anything is destroyed, it goes back to its current. When that is destroyed, it goes back to its cause. So everything getting destroyed, it ends in purusha. So, yat prayanta visambhishanti iti. The reality is that where everything at destruction, they enter into him. So, it cannot be destroyed. And everything which is destructible ends itself ending in that very being. Purushai vinasha hetu avavat. And there is nothing which can destroy that being. There is no cause of destruction of that being because it is outside the cause and effect. Avinashi is indestructible. Vikriya hetu avavacha putasanitya. And as there is no transformation possible in him, so it is unchangingly eternal. Ata eva nitya shuddha buddha mukta savava. And therefore, its characteristics are it is eternal, eternally pure, eternally awakened, eternally free. That is its very nature. Tasmat purushatna param kinchit sa kashta sa paragati. And that is what Kadok Nishad told us. Merge this mind, merge Indriyas into mind. Mind into I consciousness, I consciousness into the universal I consciousness, and that universal I consciousness into the supreme being, and that supreme being beyond that there is nothing. That is the final goal of life, and there is nothing beyond that. It is declared by the Upanishads. Tamto Upanishadam Purusham Prachami, and this also comes in the Upanishads. I am asking about that being which is told in the Upanishads. Iti cha Upanishadha to Visheshanam Purushasya Upanishad to Pradhanena Prakashya Manate Upapachate. Here as you would your Pradhan, we have just now explained that there are other scriptures like Upanishads. So, because of this sentence, Upanishadam Purusham, this adjective is given to that being meaning that mainly it is the Upanishads only which are revealing that. Then only this becomes logical. Ataha Bhuta Vastu Para Veda Vaga Na Siti Vachan Saaz Matra. So you are telling that in Vedas there is no part which is telling about the thing which is already existing. That is your dare daring. That is your wrong daring.
No. Why the people who know Shastras have told like that? That is the beautiful part now. Having shown the truth, he is telling that what is the meaning of this sentence that there is no nothing which is not karma? He says, uh, we accept that. It is for those who cannot know. It is for the karma kanda portion only. And those who follow karma kanda and those who have no capacity to transcend this do or I, for them that is true. So there is a place of everything. That is how we are told Samanvai. The right place of every part of the Vedas. Yes, it is true. Apicha, Amnayasya Kriyar Sattvat, Anarthakyam Atadarthanam, Iti Etat, Ekantena Bivgachatam, Bhutu Upadesham, Anarthakya Prasanga. If you are applying this to the whole of Vedas, then the statement about existing reality, then will that become meaningless? This statement that there is nothing which is not connected with karma, it cannot apply to that where Atman, real nature is being told. That means if you apply it to everything, then Bhuta Upadesha Nam, the teaching about things already existing, Anarthaka Prasanga, then we land into this problem that they will become meaningless. They are not meaningless. Now, how Vedanta is more valid than Karma Kanda instead? Prarutti nivrutti vidhi tat shesha vati rekena bhutam ched vastu upadishati bhavyar tatvena putasta nityam bhutam na upadishati iti ka hetu. There are certain things in the karma kanda which are not directly involved in work but it may become useful in future. And that you accept. Then why you don't accept that about the eternal Atman? Pravurti nivrutti vidhi, one thing. Tat shesha, part of that. Apart from that, bhutam chet vastu padishati. Certain thing there is a swarga, there is this or that, which is already existing. And that you take as valid. Bhavyar tattvena. Because it will come to your life in future. Now it is not there. It is there, but it will come to your life in future. The very karma phala. This you accept. Then kutasa nityam bhutam na upadishati. That which is unchangingly eternal and already existing. Why it will not teach that? So in karma kanda itself we get some portion which you are telling will come into existence in future, that you accept, which is already there, but in your life it will come in future. So why don't you accept that which is eternally true? Nai bhutam upadishyamanam kriyabhu. If a thing already exists, teaching about that does not become action. Teaching about a thing already existing does not make it into an action. Akriyatu api bhuta se kriya sadhanatva kriyartha eva bhuta upadesha iti chet na esha dosha. And the uh, Mimansa thinks that, suppose we think like that, that no action is involved at present. But it, it is helpful in some action. So we are telling about objects which are already existing. He says, no. That is not a defect in our argument. We are telling that, why not it is valid that already existing Brahman he says, no, we accept 
teaching about already existing thing because it will become a part of action, not otherwise. He said, look into it. Look into it. Kriyarthatya api kriya nirvartana shakti mat vastu padishtam kiva. You are telling it is for action. But it has the power of stopping your action that you are accepting. The nisheda vakya of the karma kanda is now bringing up. Don't do this. Is it a part of any kriya? It is just stopping your action that you are accepting. Kriyarthattam to prayojanam tasya. Well, that stopping is for doing something else. Nacha eta veta vasu anupadishtam bhavati. But you cannot deny that such a thing is taught. Such a thing is taught which is not directly kriya, which is stopping the kriya. Yadi nama upadishtam kimtava tena satit. Suppose such a thing is there, what does it avail you? Uchate. Anavagata atma su upadesha cha tatha eva bhavitum tarati. Because we do not know our real nature, so it is taught. Then that is also will be more useful than something which will become a part of karma. If something which is not part of karma is taught for any other reason, then what is the harm in teaching the eternal Brahman? And the eternal Brahman is not yet known. That is the main point. Why Upanishads are necessary, that is being explained now. That there is Brahman, our real nature, which is not known today. And so that has to be taught. That Avagatya Mitya Jnana se Sansara Eto Nivruti Prayajanam Kriyate Iti Avishishtam Arthavatam Kriya Sadhana Vastu Padeshana. When we know that, then this sansar, which is due to wrong knowledge, its very roots are cut away. That is the prayojan. The prayojan of Vedanta is to cut away the very roots of sansar and its mood, which is wrong knowledge. Iti avishishtam arthavatvam. So, if there is a sentence which asks you to do karma, it is valid. If there is a sentence which removes all the problems from your life, it is also valid. Avishishtam Arthavatva. The meaningfulness of a sentence should be judged by the prayojan. And the prayojan is stopping all problems and giving you permanent bliss. That is the Prayojan. So when the sentence is serving some prayojan and it is about a thing which is already there, then why you say it is invalid? Now it gives the example of Nisheda Vakyas. Apicha Brahmana na antavya iti cha eva madhya nivrutti upadishyas. Don't kill a Brahmin. So what action is teaching? It is stopping some action. Nacha sa kriya, nabi kriya sadhana. Neither it is an action, nor it is a means or part of some action. A kriya arthana mupadisha anartaka chet, brahmana nanta vaita di nivrutti upadisha nam anartak kem prapta. If you say if it is not a part of karma, it is anartak, then there are sentences which are not doing any karma. Like Brahman should not be killed. Nivrutti Upadesh. Then do you say that is meaningless? Tacha Anishtam. That is not at all desirable. To make them meaningless is not at all desirable. 
Anyway, we shall take up this next term. About Nisheda Vakya, we'll take up next term. Om Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Kruto Vande Bhagavanta Upuna Puna Ishwaro Guru Ratmeti Murti Beda Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murta Yenama Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamasa.